Good morning, Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Probably the first letter that he wrote of all of the epistles. This is probably the earliest of the documents of the New Testament that we have. Uh, written probably sometime around 52 or 53 AD. Uh, what are the circumstances of the letter? Well, Paul had planted the church in the th of, of, of uh, the Thessalonians in Thessalonica. Um, I think it's Acts chapter 18. And he's there for a few weeks and the gospel bears fruit. People are believing and then there is a persecution and they throw Paul out of the city. And then he heads down to Corinth. And while he's in Corinth, he is desperate to know what the state of this little fledgling church that he's only managed to spend a few weeks, whatever it was with them. And he's desperate to know their state. Have they lost their faith? Has the tempter tempted them away from the truth of the gospel? He is desperate to know. And so he sends Timothy uh, up to them or he leaves Timothy there. And then Timothy comes down and meets him in Corinth and gives him the good news that the church is doing well. It's thriving. They've got some questions, um, particularly around the second coming of Jesus, but they are doing well. And so Paul writes this letter to be sent back to them, uh, just telling them how glad he is to hear of their faith and then answering some of the questions, particularly around the second coming. And that's what the main theme of First Thessalonians is, the second coming. However, as I was reading through the letter this morning, I couldn't help noticing, because we've been making such an intense study of all of the, the epistles of Paul, I couldn't help noticing some common themes outside of the usual. Obviously, Paul is in all of his letters speaking about Jesus, speaking about the gospel of their salvation, speaking about people's um, election to salvation. These are, are things that he speaks about in every letter. But outside of the sort of core gospel truths, which he's always talking about, what are some of these other things that, that I just noticed he, he says in most of his letters? And there were um, seven of them that I spotted today. But then I saw another verse, okay? So I am going to comment on a single verse, and if there's time, then I'm going to run through the seven things that I see as common themes in his letters. And the, the verse that I do think I, I should comment on is in chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. He, he says that you should also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Okay, two reasons why you need to live a quiet life, and mind your own business, and work with your own hands. Two reasons. Number one, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside. It is a good witness to unbelievers. When you live a quiet life, when you don't poke your nose into everybody else's business and always have an opinion about other people's affairs that you're sharing, that you just mind your own business and you are quiet. It is a good witness to unbelievers. And second of all, that you may lack nothing. It is good that you work with your own hands. What is good? Mind your own business and be willing to work. Why? So that you are not a burden to others. Okay, God does not want you to constantly have to take from other people for your provision. There may be times and seasons in your life where something outside of your control happens, where you need to take help, financial help, from other Christians. Like when the Macedonian church sent aid to the Christians in Judea because there was going to be a great famine in Judea. Maybe there's a great famine. Maybe there's an economic downturn and you lose your business and you need to take help from other Christians. I've had to. But there are people in the church that never seem to get out of that. That year after year after year, they're needing help. They're needing handouts. And that is not the way it is meant to be. Now, I am not referring to you if you're in the ministry. If you are laboring in the ministry and you are depending on the support of your church, Paul talks about in other places, it is good 
that those who preach the gospel live from the gospel and that those who are in their churches should ensure that their needs are met. Well, all I can say is if you're a preacher and you are faithfully laboring, toiling night and day for the good of your church and you are not getting a buyer financially, all I can say is may God bless you, my friend, and may God open up a window of heaven that someone provides for you. But if you are the kind of, I've met Christians who are just downright lazy and they never seem to want to roll up their sleeves and work with their own hands what is good. You know, in, in ancient times, it was, this was a slave labor economy. And so anything working with your hands was looked down upon. It was frowned upon. It's a bit like in South Africa, if, you know, um, domestic work. It's kind of for the poor and uneducated, looked down upon. That's kind of what it was like here. And Paul is saying, work with your own hands. Do whatever you have to do so that you lack nothing. If you're always talking about how God's going to open some amazing door and how this opportunity is going to work, and year after year after year, you are just making empty promises, and actually you're just downright lazy. You need to be rebuked, and you need to get yourself a job and supply that is a biblical principle. And again, what are the reasons? Because God doesn't want you bumming off other people constantly. And it is a poor witness to unbelievers. There's another theme in there about being quiet, lead, leading a quiet life. Not meddling in the affairs of others. I must admit, I don't think this is something I have been particularly tempted to. In fact, if, if, if anything, I'm the opposite. I, I'm always in my sort of ivory tower of my office and I'm shooting videos and, you know, I, I kind of live this very quiet, insulated life. And so I don't think I appreciate the danger of this as much as Paul obviously had experienced it being in touch with local churches and in touch with people all the time. He often saw people meddling in the affairs of others, constantly having opinions, kind of like small town syndrome. Everybody knows everybody's business and got an opinion and, and talking about everybody behind their backs. And Paul just says, settle down. You be quiet. Close your mouth. Don't worry about other people. Don't talk so much. Close your mouth. Be quiet. Lead a quiet life. Mind your own business. This is good in the sight of God. It is good to live a quiet, humble life where we don't always express so many opinions about other people's affairs. And you get on with doing what God has called you to do. Be diligent with your work. Mind your own business. Labor with your hands. And then your witness will be effective and you will lack nothing. Right. <laughs> the seven common themes. I'm not even going to tell you the seven common themes that I wrote down because I think that is a good devotion for the morning. So God bless you. And I will see you tomorrow in 2 Thessalonians.